The thing most emphasised in the New Testament is the trial and the execution of the Lord Jesus. And it's not done in such a way as to extract our sympathy, but rather it is a formal statement because it is on the basis of the trial and the execution of Jesus that God offers forgiveness to all men. This is the legal basis that God can be just and the justifier of him who has faith in Jesus. There's no other way that sins can be forgiven other than the name of the Lord Jesus. And it all depends on the fact that Jesus was absolutely innocent but was formally condemned by the highest court of the land, both the Jewish court and the Gentile court, and executed because he was the Christ and the Son of God. It's on this basis that we receive justification when we believe in the Lord Jesus, when we accept that this happened because he took our place. We deserve the punishment, but he took it in our place. All of the New Testament writers give us a lot of detail of the period of time after Jesus is arrested to when he is buried. Jesus was arrested because he was betrayed into the hands of the chief priests by Judas Iscariot. They wanted to take him when there was no crowd around and Judas led them into the garden at night when everyone should have been asleep. But it happened to be the evening before the Passover lambs were to be killed. Therefore it would be a busy day for the priests. They had to get this matter of Jesus done with as well. So when Jesus was arrested, probably around midnight, they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then they began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him, and to say to him, Prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we read together from Mark chapter 14 verses 53 to 65. The details are that he was taken to the council and the whole council was convened. We know that they uh, omitted a couple of people, but it was formally convened. Recalling that two days before they had decided it was not possible for them to arrest Jesus, this had all been very hastily arranged. After Judas had spoken to them that previous night, the chief priest had busily organised that all the council members that he could count on to support him were gathered. There were elders, there were scribes, there were chief priests. These were the people who were offended that Jesus took authority to himself. They were the ones who said, who gave you this authority? Because they represented the highest court of the land. So the Sanhedrin convened. We understand that in fact it was convened illegally because this business was not to be carried out during the night. But it was so urgent to have Jesus condemned 
and on the cross, that they convened the council to meet before sunrise. Then they had to have a legal conviction of him. So they sought testimony against him. And there were many people who were prepared to make statements. But to the standard of this court, their statements were obviously so false they could not justify the execution of the Lord Jesus. But if they charged him with something that was not good, there was no corroboration. The law required you have two independent witnesses to testify, and they couldn't organise that. One of the charges had an element of truth in it, but even then they couldn't build a case against him. That charge was that Jesus said, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. What he had actually said is, you destroy this temple, and I will raise it up in three days. And he was referring to the temple of his body, not to the temple made with hands. So Jesus' statement was sufficiently open to interpretation that it could be misunderstood that he was referring to earthly temple, but it was not explicit enough that they could get a conviction. They couldn't agree on exactly what he did say. The high priest is frustrated because Jesus has not made any attempt to defend himself. He hasn't attempted to answer any of the charges that anyone brought. He didn't even say, no, it's not true, or shake his head. He just kept silent and answered nothing. Why was that? It was their responsibility, first of all, to make the case against him, and they couldn't. Second, while he personally was innocent, these are things that we would be guilty of, and he was accepting the charges on our behalf that we might be justified when he was executed. And so the chief priest, in frustration, says, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? This is what it all hinges on. Is Jesus the Messiah, and is he the Son of God? And Jesus affirms yes to both of these propositions. I am. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. This is a direct reference to Daniel chapter 7, where the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven is brought before the Ancient of Days and is granted the kingdom. It's a direct messianic claim, and he claims, I am, effectively saying, I am God. He is the one who sits at the right hand of the power, the right hand of God, and he is the one to whom are given the kingdoms of the earth. There is no hesitation when it comes to the essence of the matter. Jesus doesn't pretend he is not, he doesn't deny, he doesn't remain silent, he affirms. I am. Well, this is sufficient for the high priest, for they will not accept that claim. Despite all the evidence, the logical thing for a court of law to say, well, if you make this claim, what is the evidence? And Jesus' life was full of the evidence. The miracles that he performed, the teaching that he performed, the righteousness of his life, there was no fault in him at all. But if you reject the claim then you reject all of the evidence. It's exactly the same as those who believe in evolution. They reject creation, even though all of the evidence is entirely consistent with creation and against evolution. So he calls for a verdict. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. This is why the death sentence is not a good idea. It's not that those who commit murder should not be executed. But it's because the death sentence provides a way which unrighteous men can kill righteous men by charging them with blasphemy. Having carried the motion, they spit on him, blindfold him, beat him, challenge him, prophesy, strike him with their hands.